Today we're going to save about $500 on a cosmetic operation. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Cosmetic operation? No, no, that's not right. We're getting off track here. We can't play doctor on YouTube like that. Sure, but Carlos, let me finish, okay? Please. Today we're going to save about $500 on a cosmetic operation, but a cosmetic operation for our boats. Because today we're going to learn how to make a big upgrade to our dashboard or switches panel to customize and update it both aesthetically and functionally. We'll see how to do it easily and we'll see how to do it with very few tools, but also how to give it an almost professional finish using a CNC machine costing around $150, which will be our starting point. You just wanted to play with the CNC, didn't you? I was looking for an excuse to use it for something. Greetings sailors and welcome to a new episode of the Low Cost Sailor. In today's episode, we'll explore different methods to show how we can rejuvenate some of our boat's panels, giving them a more modern appearance while also adding new indicators and additional functionalities to them. In my specific case, we'll see how to perform two operations, constructing a protector for our engine panel and at the same time updating some of the instruments and indicators, redistributing them to give them a refreshed and modernized look. You want to add some bling there, don't you? It looked old-fashioned, well, you can see it in the pictures, but there you go. We'll explore the wide variety of indicators, instruments, switches, and more available on AliExpress that we can incorporate into our existing panel. Additionally, we can use these components to construct a completely new and revitalized panel. To build our custom panel, we'll explore how to do it manually with tools like a saw and drill. However, for a significant upgrade, we can utilize a small CNC machine like the CNC3018 from AliExpress, enabling us to achieve a truly impressive level of customization and precision. The truth is that some things quickly become outdated, giving our boats a somewhat dated appearance. Switch panels like this one, for example, and especially the engine panel of my boat, they had a decrepit and very outdated appearance. The successive additions of gauges, along with the engine panel being from the 90s, featuring traditional bulb indicators, sun damaged and repainted multiple times, with corners already cracked, made it really worn out and in poor condition, truth be told. But it's also understandable because, in the end, it's constantly exposed to the sun and rain outdoors, clearly needing better protection and, above all, a full renovation. Similar to classic cars, there are some people who prefer preserving the original appearance and opt for an authentic vintage panel for their boat. Well, when you see they're going to charge you over $500 for a panel that, even though new, will still be functionally and aesthetically from the 90s, I don't know. It took away my desire and I decided I was going to do several things myself. 500 bucks for that crap. Yes, it's actually a piece of plastic with bulbs. The thing is, they're very old bulbs. Hard to find. Really hard to find. Hard to and find. also, they consume much more than modern ones. Good grief. And I decided I was going to do several things. First, protect the current panel with a transparent acrylic sheet to see if it stops aging, but also to be able to lean on that area without fear of breaking the engine key, which has already happened to me, and gain a bit of space to sit in the cockpit. Also, I had a nice plan to remove the old hour meter and upgrade the tachometer. In a previous episode, we learned how to install one, but I prefer a model with a larger needle for better visibility in really bright sunlight. The digital one works fine, but I had to get close to read it outdoors, and it wasn't very stylish. So I bought a really cool one like this. And lastly, renovating the engine panel with the ignition key, the indicators, which were not only worn out but also had old filament bulbs, and I also wanted to add new functionalities for some inventions I had already made, for example like the man overboard or the chain counter, giving it a much more modern finish. But it doesn't stop there, because since it was very worn out, I also wanted to update the panel background, which had many visible marks from old cuts and clocks that were no longer there, or that I wanted to completely eliminate, and of course all of this while saving money because I'm really big on saving as much as possible. The first thing I tackled was creating a transparent cover for the engine panel. I wanted to build a protective lid to shield all the gauges, indicators and ignition key from the elements and also from people sitting there who might press buttons or damage keys. Was that a butt? Yes, not mine. Wasn't it yours? Could it be whom I suspect? It's the butt of whom you suspect. Yes, yes. Besides, I told him, don't sit there, Roberto. Don't sit there, Roberto. <laughs> You're going to break the key. Don't sit there. And after a while, sure enough, the key was broken, but we didn't know how it happened. 
As I mentioned before, this cover had to be transparent so that the indicators could be visible without opening it and it had to open and close easily. My solution involved using a pair of small stainless steel hinges and a transparent acrylic sheet to construct the cover. This is the most challenging choice because we need to find a transparent material that is easy to work with, not fragile, and above all, does not yellow in the sun. The truth is, there's an impressive array of materials available, from traditional acrylic to UV-treated polystyrenes and polycarbonates, which are among the best options. After testing several materials that showed some yellowing over time, I decided to go with a synthetic glass from Leroy Merlin, specifically treated for solar resistance. Ideally, I would have used 5mm material, but in my case, I needed the cover to flex a bit to fit the curves of the space. You'll need to create a template for this. You can use a cardboard or transparent sheet, sketch the design on the transparent glass, and cut and sand its shape using traditional methods. In my case, I used a circular saw and sandpaper. Then it was a matter of drilling holes for the hinges, one slightly larger for a knob to be able to open and close, and I finished making my magnetic closure using white magnets from kitchen cabinets. When drilling the holes, ensure the synthetic glass is well supported and keep the protective film on to prevent cracking or breaking. Overall, the project looked quite decent, was surprisingly straightforward, and most importantly, turned out to be incredibly useful. However, on the other side of the glass, the truth is that it still looked quite outdated. The original hour meter clock only served to cover up the hole where it was placed since the tachometer also has an hour meter, and I don't need the feature doubled. The tachometer had become indeed too small, and the engine panel appeared worn and old due to repeated repaints. Its indicators were outdated relics of the past century. I had replaced a few indicators, like the fuel gauge, with slightly more modern ones from AliExpress a couple of years ago. So I started searching on my beloved AliExpress for newer switches and indicators to enhance the aesthetics of what I already had and to add some more current functionality. First, for the tachometer, I found a large and attractive needle gauge adapted to my boat's range for $28, which was going to greatly improve its visibility and aesthetics. I had to replace more than just the ignition key indicators and the engine start button. They were completely worn out. As I started searching for replacements, it felt like opening Pandora's box of possibilities and challenges in upgrading the entire panel. On AliExpress, there's everything you can imagine. Lots of 12-volt LED indicators with various symbols, all the symbols you could want and in whatever sizes you need. The variety on AliExpress is astounding. They offer weather-resistant motorcycle-style ignition switches that are easy to install, along with specific buttons for engine start and stop that feature LED feedback. You can find switches and push buttons adorned with dazzling aesthetics designed to withstand outdoor conditions and available in a wide range of sizes and diameters to suit your needs perfectly. I'll leave you in the website post and in the video description the ones I've used, but you'll find a lot of options. Even what I thought I wouldn't find, such as the audible alarm that I initially planned to reuse from the old panel, I discovered in a design that perfectly matched everything else I purchased. Not only that, it's waterproof too. Absolutely perfect. And all of it Chinese made. A little reflection. Everything is Chinese. Everything is Chinese. Everything is made in China. Everything. Absolutely everything. I wouldn't be surprised if my parents didn't make me in China. All that was left was to replace the old ones with the new ones and make a few more holes to add some functionality. I weighed the option of reusing the original panel and simply upgrading the indicators and accessories with newer versions. However, due to the existing cracks in the original panel's plastic, I opted to expand its size slightly. This adjustment not only enabled the incorporation of additional buttons, but also effectively concealed the void left after removing the old hour meter. Once again, as simple as choosing a sheet of sun-resistant material, in my case, a black acrylic sheet I bought on Amazon, and cutting it to the appropriate dimensions. You could achieve these tasks by starting with a paper design, cutting the acrylic using a circular saw or jigsaw and drilling holes for the indicators with a drill similar to our approach with the transparent part. However, the outcome may not match the precision and quality you'd get from designing it on a computer and using a computer numerical control CNC milling machine. CNC machines are numerical milling machines that, much like printers, enable the conversion of all types of computer-designed parts with very high precision. Unlike printers, which use an additive process by gradually adding material to achieve the desired shape, CNC machines work in the opposite way by subtracting material to create the desired form. Starting from a block of material or sheet, CNC machines carve out the unnecessary material, leaving behind only the desired part. This subtractive process results in stronger pieces compared to those made with printers, which build up material layer by layer. CNC machines designed for computer use are surprisingly affordable these days. You can get a model known as the 3018 for less than $150. This refers to its ability to handle pieces up to 30 by 18 centimeters. These machines are highly sought after due to their versatility in working with materials within these dimensions. 
In my case, it couldn't have been cheaper because my friend Manolo had lent me one a while ago, so this is the perfect opportunity to use it. The first step is designing the panel we want to create. There are many different software options for this, but I looked for the simplest and easiest to use. In this case, I used Easel from Inventables, which is completely online and very user-friendly. You can find the link in the description. It offers a free 30-day trial and is straightforward to use. Essentially, you input the measurements of the material you're using, its thickness, and even the material type, and then you can start designing right away. You start by sketching out the shapes you want to cut and marking where you'll make holes. You might also add a decorative design or logo, similar to what I did. It's important to provide specific instructions for each cut and hole you plan to create. Depth is what distinguishes a cut from an engraving. If the depth matches the thickness of the material, you'll be cutting and separating a piece of material. If the depth is less than the material's thickness, you'll simply be engraving the surface. Regarding the type of cut, you can specify whether you want to completely hollow out the interior of the shape or simply engrave its outline. That's often very useful for engravings. Well, design is a whole world in itself, but you'll see that achieving it with easel is quite straightforward. Just create the drawing you want. The next step is ensuring that the CNC machine can execute what you've designed. Once you have the desired design, it's time to transfer it onto the appropriate material. The easiest material to work with using these CNC machines, and where I recommend you start, is wood. I did my initial tests on a 5mm thick wood sheet, which is optimal for CNC work. It's inexpensive and allows you to test everything to ensure it fits your design perfectly and works correctly. Performing milling with the CNC and easel is straightforward because it includes support for a wide variety of machines and can be as simple as connecting it via USB to the computer and selecting the machine type in easel. In my case, it's a generic 3018 model. You'll directly get a preview of how it will look, the estimated printing time, and you can even decide whether to use a single bit or multiple. Typically, a very fine bit is used for engraving details, while a thicker one is used for cuts and hollowing out. You can also divide your design into multiple phases, as I did, to decide which bit to use for each part. It's important to mark the origin point on the material so that all phases remain aligned throughout the process. And that's it. Now you can press the carve button. Wood allows for designing really cool things. It's the easiest material to work with and you'll likely not make too many mistakes. However, wood may not be the most suitable material for an outdoor electrical panel due to weather exposure. That's why I chose to use an acrylic sheet from Amazon instead. While acrylic panels look great, they can be quite challenging to work with. You may encounter some of the same difficulties I faced, but hopefully you'll make fewer mistakes by learning from my experiences and the errors I've encountered. Plastic materials can melt under the heat generated by the CNC, especially due to friction. This can result in melted residues that may clog the cutter, potentially ruining your engraving project. It's crucial to select materials with good heat resistance and suitable properties for CNC operations to avoid these issues. I've spent quite a bit of time watching videos on spindle speed, cutting rates, feed speeds and related parameters. While navigating through the coronavirus lockdown at home, I ran into some considerable challenges while attempting to cut my panel. That's what you were doing during the lockdown. <laughs> In the end, I'll share with you the type of bit I used and the cutting parameters I experimented with around here. However, I must admit, I didn't achieve successful results until I incorporated cooling into the process. What was nearly impossible became easy when I started using a water spray with a bit of diluted soap to cool down the cutting process. The material stopped melting and the supports and engravings turned out precise and clean. However, I had to keep applying water throughout the entire cutting process. It's not the most orthodox method. I'm sure it can be done with proper parameter adjustment and good quality material as they say in all the videos I've watched. I haven't been able to replicate it. However, with this material my results would have been better with laser cutting. I'm happy that I managed to create my panel with its engraving and the great thing about CNC is that I can replicate it exactly the same way as many times as I need to. It was time to put everything in place. Of course, like me, you might find that the fiberglass and gel coat around where the panel goes are dirty, worn out with some extra holes or marks from previous hole coverings. I decided that after covering up the old mismatched holes and such, I would cover everything with an exterior vinyl typically sold for cars. This time, I took a bold step and didn't seek my wife's opinion. I chose a carbon fiber style finish for the panel. I had initially tested a really cool blue option, but in the end I settled on something more subtle, a white exterior vinyl with a carbon finish. All that was left was to place each component in its position, using a soldering iron and scissors to cut the wires from the original indicators and connect them to the new ones. If your original panel didn't come with a connector like mine, now is a good opportunity to add one. You can find plenty of automation connectors available on AliExpress. Once everything is connected, securely screw it into place, reassemble all the accessories, and that's it. 
Well now, if you're looking to add a more professional touch, you can consider using some kind of silicone to create a seal. A very cost-effective option is silicone placemats from AliExpress. You can cut them with a laser and finish them neatly. Now, you can enjoy my newly upgraded instrument panel, which gives the boat a fantastic look. It's as if it just rolled out of a modern shipyard, not one from the 90s. Who would have thought I could pull off something so cool? With my kids, I've already started planting the seed that they can create really neat things there, but this and this, look, 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 this is that carbon finish I was telling you about. The carbon finish. Originally, I put the background in blue color, but later I found it too flashy, so I changed it to white with the carbon finish. This video has an aim to teach you how to operate a CNC and handle every detail. Instead, its purpose is to inspire you with the possibilities and show that there are thousands of components on AliExpress to build and renovate as you wish. After achieving this result, I'm motivated to also renovate the interior switch panel of the boat. They're really outdated, and aesthetically updating them can significantly enhance the boat's appearance. Having old-looking components gives the boat an aged appearance that I'd like to refresh. And well, I think we haven't talked about money at all in the whole video, but here we go. I've probably invested around $35 here compared to over $500 for getting one that looks old and also didn't cover up the clock hole. These CNC machines are marvelous. You design everything calmly on the computer, adjust it, test it in wood, assess if it fits or needs adjustments like shifting a bit to the right without physical trials. Then, when you're satisfied, you generate the final version. The CNC cuts it precisely, positions it accurately with correctly sized holes, and all that's left is to insert the buttons in place, resulting in a fantastic outcome. And if you decide, I'd like to add two more buttons, you can take that design, add the two buttons, reprint it, and there you go. Absolutely marvelous. It's really experimenting more with these machines, especially considering how affordable they are Thank you for watching sailors, I hope you enjoyed today's episode. If you liked it, please give us a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon for notifications. Your support is greatly appreciated. You can find all the links of the things we used below in the video description, along with updates on our social media channels. And if you're not into TikTok, Instagram and those things, we'll see you in a couple of weeks for a new episode of The Low Cost Sailor. <laughs>